Welcome to the All Central Podcast. I'm your host, Pastor Larry Kirk. I am joined today by one of Baltimore's greats, the great theologians of our time. Pastor Jonathan Prothero is with us in the house. Uh, we're super excited to, uh, to come to you guys, and we are going to talk to you guys today about a wedding. Yes. A wedding. A wedding. Speaking of weddings. Yeah. You have a wedding coming up. Wedding number two. Number two. To the same person. To the same person. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Because one isn't enough for my girl. Yeah. You need two. <laughs> and, and, and within a year. With right, uh, a year. No, J- a little July thirty first was the first one. Okay, twenty twenty one. I see. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, weddings. Good. Remember that. <laughs> uh, August. <laughs> no, not August. October first will be. So when? The which one do wedding. you celebrate? Or do you celebrate both of them? No, I've very. I've laid the law. I I put a law. I put a line down, and I said, Amanda, you pick one. <laughs> That's. We're not celebrating two anniversaries every year for the rest of our life. I don't know. You, you get to pick, but you pick one. And so she picked one. And then within five seconds, she goes, but we can still always celebrate the other one. I, no, just, no. Just one. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you understand this whole conversation. Um, no, but for, for those of you who don't yeah. know, we, we did a small thing over COVID because my family couldn't do international yeah, travel. Yeah, that yeah, was all shut yeah, down. We didn't want yeah. to wait forever. So we did a very small, It wasn't that they're narcissists. It was just because they, right. you know. We just yeah, love having yeah. days that are all about us. Yeah. Um, no, so it was yeah. a great small wedding. And, and now October, you know, family's coming yeah. over and friends and all the groomsmen. Yeah, and so, be fun. yeah, that, that's just a chance for us to do a slightly bigger celebration as we feel like, uh, we, well, we just wanted to, you know. You don't yeah. have to, but... I th- Here's a good point. When it comes to celebration, it should be a just I want to. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you, and you know, what, what, which leads us into, you know, this week's celebration of uh, in, in, as far as church goes, Pentecost. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And we, we, we heard such a powerful message from Pastor Shane, a good friend of ours. Yeah. And we're going to be piggybacking off that a lot today. Yeah, but it's yeah. I mean, whenever Shane brings it, he brings it. Uh, there's always so much in there. In 25 minutes, he yeah. gave us enough to do maybe five podcasts. Probably, at um, least. We'll, we'll yeah. settle with the one, but yeah. um, or or whatever. It's just phenomenal how much he packs in there. But it is a celebration, yeah. um, and it has to be yeah. remembered as such. Next Sunday is Pentecost. Yeah, and uh, and so he just did a great job of unpacking a different way of viewing Pentecost yeah. from probably what you've grown up with. I've grown up sure. with most evangelicals have grown up with. Well, let's start with that. Let's start yeah. with, let's start with uh, what you grew up with as far as what Pentecost was to you, to you guys uh, uh, growing up. What was that? What was that like? What I mean, what, how was it discussed? Pentecost for me growing up was a lot of praying in tongues. Yeah. Uh, and I don't mean that pejoratively or to talk down about brain yeah. tongues, but it was very yeah. much a big focus on spirit filled gifts yeah. and expression. And Which that's a part of it, right? It's, it's a beautiful. We'll, we'll get, to, yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll yeah. get to what he talked about being a part of it, but that yeah. was really what it was about. You know, it was celebrating um, the receiving of the Holy spirit being spirit filled and that, typically meant a couple of things it meant that you laughed a lot it meant that you prayed in tongues a lot and it meant that you ran around in a service a lot usually with a banner or something so it was a lot of loud we had banner moments at central ribbons yeah some ribbons (laughs) in the name of jesus with your ribbon (laughs) yeah yeah Um, we had some we had some banner waving people like if you sat on the front row you 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 had a shot at getting whacked by a banner like, you, like, face. like literally a flag would be flying near you. You'd hear that flag waving pop, 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 by your face. You're like, <laughs> and it oh. was, it you was, know. it was always the same people that were super, ex, you know, stoked to get yeah, that flag. Expressive. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you do that, like, but you know, for, like for me, it was always about like the focus should have been on Jesus mm-hmm. and not the person waving the flag. And that's the hard part, right? When people, new people come into your church, they're like, they look at something like that. And it's like their whole focus is like, what is that person doing with that flag? Cause they have no idea. Yeah. They have no clue. They didn't grow up in the church like you and I did. No context for them. Yeah, no context for it. P- people do. They will often bring that up. Well, well, are you a spirit filled church? And yeah. And of course that's such a loaded question oh, gosh. because you can tell what they're asking is, am yeah. I free to express? Yeah any which way I want to in the hour long service that you have yeah. to which you would say, no, no, not really. Yeah. Um, that's not to say you can't express 
six days a week how you want to, and mm -hmm. actually for the rest of Sunday, 23 hours how you want to. But in a congregational setting, Paul's very specific on when you meet, mm -hmm. not everybody gets up and talks and That's prophesies because right. it's That's a right. mess. When yeah. you meet, you know, the education to women was sit down and learn. And that's not because women have to sit down and learn specifically. It's because for the first time women were learning and they had to learn just how men were learning, which is to sit down and be quiet while yeah. the guy is teaching. Yeah. And so there's very specific rules and regulations about how to meet on a Sunday service and why to make it palatable for the new person coming in. Yeah. And so it's not that we don't believe in the spirit or believe in expression That's or right. believe in any yeah. of those things, but for an hour we're trying to be missional. And some of that stuff is just not helpful. Yeah, and I think I think that's that you know that's pretty clear with central like we're yeah, you, you could say yes, we're a, a spirit-filled church obviously, but but in not maybe the way other people define it, but as far as our church, you know, our services and how they're how they're ran, it's very it's it's going to be very missional. It's going to be very focused on those who um, are far from God, and mm -hmm. and and we want to connect them in such a way that it does change their life, or revolutionize their life, and connect them to our roots when when it comes to this language and this kind of um, uh, thought on on how to live life out full of the spirit yeah and and i think full of the spirit when people ask you know uh are you spirit-filled church again their understanding of what that means is so limited to you know loud expressions in worship or dancing around or flags or chauffeurs or chauffeurs or whatever it is yeah um that that being holy spirit filled means a heck of a lot more than just being loud on a Sunday service yeah. or being, you know, the happy clappy church or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, and and Shane Willard did a great job of redefining for, in a lot of ways what being spirit-filled means yeah. and, and how it should fundamentally change you as a person and the way you interact with this world. It's not just about a charismatic expression that was really indicative of a certain movement in a certain era in certain countries. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was. It's it's not about you, you know. Exactly. I mean, it does happen to you, and it and it does um, work in your life in such a way that it should change your life. Mm -hmm. um, and and he talks about that at the back end of the message. I thought it was just brilliant because we do forget when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, both in Acts and in Leviticus. I think he brought it right. It was out of yeah. Leviticus. He, yep. he taught out of that generosity is a massive part of being someone that's full of the spirit. Yeah. That's exactly like my if you're point. stingy and you, and you use your spiritual language. Well, you've missed it. You've missed it. Uh, and yeah. are you even really spirit filled? Yeah. Like the question he asked was yeah. how can you have an encounter with God? Yeah. And not want to help those who are afflicted and suffering around you. Um, you know, so from Leviticus, it's it's don't harvest to the corners and the edges of your field, and, right. and don't don't go over it again gleaning. Leave it for the poor. Leave it for the alien among you, which is the foreigner. Yeah. Um, think about that in today's context: the immigrant, yeah. the foreigner coming yeah. in. Wait, we're actually meant to help them. That's right. Um, according to scripture. Yeah. And and so so the simple idea of if you are spirit filled, that will manifest itself possibly in tongues, but ultimately it will manifest itself in generosity. Yeah. And that's what real spirit-filled people look like. I even wrote down James one twenty-seven when it says, true and pure religion that is pleasing to the Lord is taking care of the widow and the orphan among you. Mm. Now, it's not just widow and orphan specifically, it's the marginalized among you. Um, and so spirit-filled people, ultimately that has to result in something. It can't just result in an experience. The experience has to lead you to change. Yeah. yeah. So, so Pentecostals are high on experience. But if that experience doesn't change you or shift you into moving, yeah. into doing something um, for those around you, into re reducing suffering, then what's the point of the experience? Yeah, he says, in, I wrote it down actually, he says, is my relationship with God leading me to make other people's lives better? Yeah. That's a great question for anybody. Like yeah. if, like your experience with Jesus and your experience with the Lord and, and the Holy Spirit and, 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 you know, whatever, however context you put that in, you're listening to this, um, Whatever that is, is your life not only, and we're not talking about just your life better. He says, are you are you making other people's lives better? 
Yeah, that that was when I came up at the end of the service. That was the question I asked. Like Christians, people who have walked with God for a long time, is your world better because you're yeah. in it? Yeah. Or, or are people better off because you're in it? Are they receiving more generosity? Are they more peaceable yeah. because you're in their life? Are they becoming more loving, more Christ-like? Is another yeah. way of saying it. I could go on and on. Yeah. But when you enter the room, is it becoming more Christ-like? Or is it more Christ-like when you've left the room? Yeah. Is it becoming more antagonistic? Because mm. some people just enter a room ready for a fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's, yeah. let's, ha- let's just, you know, yeah. they, they don't even want to discuss it. They just want to fight. That's and, right. And I'm, I mean, rhetoric, you know, is, is verbally. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and everything about it becomes anti-unification, um, which is what Christ was all about. And so I just love the simple idea that Pentecost is about, not just about an experience, but it's about how that experience transforms us. <sighs> yeah. I mean, you know, when growing up with it um, and the focal point of of Pentecost and all those things, and, and, and I get it, I understand, you know, you know, I don't even like the label uh, as a Pentecostal. Like, I don't, I don't even like that label. I, yeah. I, I don't I don't like it just from the fact that that doesn't define who I am. Like, like it should be Christ, right. Christian. Yeah, you know that should define who. Not a Pentecostal or a Baptist or a Methodist or a, you know, what does that even mean? You're a yeah. Baptist. Like, okay, was that your theology? That's, but does that define who you are? Like, is that is that an expression of Jesus, a Baptist, or right. is that, like, you know, I just I can't stand labels like that. So yeah, so growing up with with that that thought and those things, you know, and and what that brought to the table, I, I think sometimes you you run so far away from that experience that you, you lose that over time. Yeah. And that was the, that was the hard part, right. Uh, over time. And then, and then you, and then you realize, wait a minute, no, 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 that was a great connection <laughs> being filled with the Holy spirit and, and using my spiritual language and all those things. That, that is such a vital part of my life. Why am I running from that? Because over here they made it weird. Right. And, and, and it was, and it was just this weird experience. And then, and then, you know, if you didn't have that weird experience and you're not full of the Holy Spirit and it's yeah. like you're in, we're out, you know, yeah. it, it, all of those, all those things come into play. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Because if you, just like you said, if you didn't have an experience like mine, yeah. then somehow that's not valid. It's not valid. Yeah. It's and a it's a really sad way of limiting the experiences that we have with God, because for some people it's very quiet and it's very soft but still deeply meaningful to them. Mm-hmm. And, and for others, it expresses itself, you know, much more charismatically and loud. Um, but the idea that you have to be laughing or you have to be doing X, Y, and Z, we just created another checklist, you know, to prove whether you're really full of the Spirit. Yeah. Um, and so experience became king and transformation took a second place. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's the shift that the horse is now being put in front of the carriage where the experience is not king. It's, it's how that experience transforms you. And is that really transforming you to becoming a better person and to help the suffering that's around you? And that, that was my thing probably 15 years ago. Like, okay, these people are being fill, filled with the Holy Spirit, quote unquote, filled yeah. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But there's no change. Why, right. why do you meet people who are, quote unquote, filled with the Holy Spirit, mm. 30 years, yeah. and they're more angry today than they've ever been. Yeah, yeah. Tell me why that's a that that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. That, I mean, that that was my thing. Like, why, well, why are they so angry? Like, you're full of the Holy Spirit, and you're supposed to be drawing closer to God. Like, like this is a, 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 you know, the fruits of the Spirit, you know, love, joy. I don't see love or joy. Like, I don't see why, why, why would I, why would I want to be a part of that? Yeah. You know, and that was my thing uh, 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a real problem with that. Yeah. And, and Jesus really clearly spells, spells it out for us in Matthew seven. He says, you will know people by their fruit. So, yeah. so when he's talking about false prophets, he says, false prophets will come among you. Yeah. False teachers. And they will be uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. They'll have the expression and the appearance of gentleness and patience, 
They'll have, they'll outwardly, that they even may have what seems like good teaching. Mm. And he said, you won't recognize them by their dogma or their doctrine. Like, just, just let that sink in for a second. Yeah. For some of you who are really into, like, the scripture, yeah. I'm going to, yeah. because, because everybody who we disagree with all of a sudden becomes a false prophet. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's not about who you disagree with. He says, you're not going to know people by what they know. You're going to know people by what they produce. That's right. What comes out of their life. Yeah. Are, are they producing, and are people, again, more patient around them because they're in their lives? Are they becoming more gentle? Are they becoming kinder? Are they becoming mm -hmm. loving? Like those fruits of the Spirit that, That's right. that Paul then unpacks in Galatians 5. Yeah. And, and Paul, in the whole of Galatians, is really unpacking Matthew mm -hmm. and the Sermon on the Mount in, in many ways. Um, uh, it, that it's the fruit that we know people. It's not their giftings, which we're so attracted to. It's not all the outward stuff, but that, that inward... Which sounds simple to say, but we, we fall into that trap time and time again yeah. of always judging people by their expression yeah. and not by the fruit that they produce. That's and, right. And, and wouldn't it be sad to be a Christian for 30 years but not really have produced any fruit in your life? Yeah. I mean, I know some, believe it or not. Yeah. I mean, you've been around the church as long as we have. Like, I've grew up in the church. Yeah. I mean, I know people like that. Which to me is such a sad thing, because it's not it's not an expression of who Jesus really is. It's it's, and whatever whatever it was, wherever they stopped growing, or got hung up, you know, on something, mm -hmm. um, and and you know, how does Shane how does Shane say it? He says, "Listen, don't. It's not about you being right about Scripture." Mm. Right, it's about you fulfilling scripture. Right? Does exactly. he say it's something like yeah. that? Right? Yeah. It's about fulfilling scripture. Mm -hmm. It's not about you being right about it. Yeah. It's it's not that we're sitting here today and we're deep diving into something and we're breaking words down and everything and like we we got to get this exegetical. We got to break it all down for everybody so it's you know it's perfect and it's right. It's not about that at mm. the end of the day. It's about fulfilling scripture. It's about just what you just said, Jay, is becoming more like Christ. Are we more kinder today? Do we have more joy today? Do we are we experiencing the fullness of what the Holy Spirit brings in our life? You yeah. know, when's the last time you've really moved in the in, in one of the gifts of the Spirit? Mm. Right? When's the last time that you prayed for someone and they were healed? When's the last time you gave someone a prophetic word? Um, when's the last time, like those kind of moments, right? Yeah. When, when, when's the last time you had that? I'm, I'm, you know, one of the gifts is using your spiritual language, but that's, that's okay. Okay. But, but there's a fulfillment of this thing that, that, uh, God's called us to do. Jesus has called us to do. And, and, and that, that comes through the power and listen, it, it's all about the power of the Holy spirit that works through us. Yes. Jesus said that. Yeah. Acts 1, like it's it's dunamis power, it's dynamite, it's going to be, and you're going to need it to fulfill everything he's called us to do. And and in that, you know, when's the, ask yourself the question, when's the last time God really used me in that way? Mm. You know, and when's the last time the Holy Spirit really used me in such a way that it changed and revolutionized the, like it changed the atmosphere. Yeah. Right? In, in that moment. I, I remember going into Starbucks one time. And, um, it's weird, man. When, when the Holy spirit like speaks to you in, in a moment where you're getting a coffee, you know, I was getting a caramel macchiato with non-fat. It's not coffee. I don't know. I don't know why I say non-fat because I get whipped with it. But anyway, I said a non-fat with whip caramel macchiato. At what double, point double does it huh? stop becoming coffee? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a barista. My this good friend, like... my good friend said it's dessert in a cup. Dessert in a cup. Yeah, dessert right. in a cup. So I was getting a dessert in a cup, not coffee. And 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 the Lord spoke to me about this person and and all it was was ask them is this simple. Ask them how they are doing. Mm -hmm. And I I looked looked at this this uh this lady and I said, "How are you doing today?" Mm. it was it it ha, it was so bad mm. like tears like she had to walk away from the register we had to step over to the side somebody else come up took over and i just ministered to her right in the middle of starbucks oh, like in that moment and that that's what you have to ask yourself when's the last time that the holy spirit if you're full of the holy spirit right and he's working in our life when's the last time that's really actually things like that are happening in your life. Yeah. And I bet you asked it 
differently. I you know do. how we often mm -hmm. say, oh, how are you doing today? You, yeah. you know, it's another thing to look somebody in the eye and yeah. very, you know what I sincere. mean? That, that great, yeah, yeah, that sincere, yeah. like I actually care. How yeah. are you doing today? Yeah. Is, uh, is one of the most profound questions I think yeah. we can ask anybody. Yeah. But yeah, that simple thing of fulfilling scripture. Yeah. Like I could go on a rant here when it comes mm -hmm. to being right about scripture, because at the end of the day, as soon as you set yourself up as a theologian or or somebody who, you know, you were knows. A <laughs> I've never set myself no, up I'm as that. Kidding. Please don't say that. <laughs> I'm definitely not. <laughs> um, you know, but, but people want to argue with you about scripture they want your take or and and they're ready to go and and i just don't care anymore i'm like i on it who cares if you're right yeah M my question is how many people have you asked how are they doing today yeah and and how how often have you been aware of those moments that's right uh, yeah. you look at the disciples they didn't they don't i mean maybe not the disciples but but for most of history jesus's followers didn't have a bible to turn to that they right. didn't need to be right about scripture. Mm -hmm. That they just needed to fulfill the law of scripture. Yeah. You know, the the Jesus calls all of the teachers of the law hypocrites, not because they were wrong about scripture. Right. He said what they teach is brilliant. Yeah. The only issue is they don't for, they don't do it. They don't do it themselves. Yeah. yeah. Listen to what they're yeah. saying. Just don't yeah. copy their lives. Yeah. So who cares if you're right about a piece of scripture? And there's an unbelievable amount of arrogance that comes. Um, with people when it comes to being certain about scripture. Yeah. I like Paul's thing. The older he gets, the less certain he becomes. You know, at the end of his life, he's kind of like, uh, you know, I've settled it to know nothing yeah. other than Christ died, resurrected, you know, Christ That's crucified. It's humility, man. It's real humility. Yeah, and it's I true think humility. The, the thing about scripture is we have mm. to be incredibly humble when we approach it and understand that there's no one way to read scripture. I think there are wrong ways, obviously, to interpret scripture. But the scripture is living and it keeps working on us and it's dynamic and it and mm. it moves in different ways. And and when you become a father, you're gonna read it differently from when you're an 18 year old kid. That's right. And it's not because the scriptures change, it's because we shift and, and mold and move. And and so this whole idea about being right about scripture, uh, it it drives me nuts. Yeah. Uh, or someone goes, Oh, now I've understood that scripture. I'm like You've understood it as though there's only one way to understand this. Um, you have to keep re-engaging with it. That's why Jesus teaches in parables, because yeah. there's just constant ways to re-engage with that. Yeah, Scripture. I mean, what, how many times have you done this? Like, you, you look at a piece of Scripture 10 years ago, and you look at it today, and it's something totally different in your Completely life. Completely different. Yeah. It's like a it's like a multifaceted gem, the Scriptures say. Mm -hmm. You know, each time you turn it to the light, there's a different there's a different. Um, angle of light that comes through it. There's just a different view of it. Yeah. And yeah. God's word is like that. It's just a different view. Um, yeah. I, I look at scripture so differently. And a lot of it has to do with Pastor Shane and, and um, you know, meeting him over 13 years ago, I think now, and and developing that relationship and and helping me see scripture in a different light as well. And, and understanding that it's not about, like you just said, it's not about just being right. It's about the fulfillment of it. Mm. Like what in your life, what are you fulfilling that's, that looks like Jesus yeah. in your life. Yeah. And I, I think Jesus is much more interested in people that fulfill than people who are right. Yeah. Um, because honestly, who cares? I, I think I think a person that doesn't even know scripture wouldn't even know one verse in the Bible, but goes feed feeds someone who's hurting. Yep. Goes down, makes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for somebody, feeds them. And I think I think that that's what gets God's attention. Yeah, because their life yeah. is expressing the sovereignty of Christ. They may not have the words for it or the right. rhetoric exactly. or the knowledge yep. or whatever or the degrees, but everything about their life is expressing who Jesus was to people. And and that's that's moving. That moves the heart of God. And Paul says it, you know, if you have not love, you're just yeah. another sound. Another sound. Yeah. And we don't need more sound in this world. No. Like we, we don't need any more noise. We really <laughs> yeah. don't. It's, no more noise, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so we get all these, you know, you you talked about it, you know, Pentecostals or or whether it's Baptist or evangelical or yeah. you know, whether it's Methodist or Lutheran or Catholic or whatever, all of these different denominations because we disagree on doctrine. But but can we all be people? I don't, I'm actually okay with there being differences in doctrine because at least yeah. people are wrestling with it. Yeah. As, yeah, as long as we're all fulfilling the yeah. central things of Scripture. Yeah, and not making doctrine the God, right? That's the and that's the problem. Not making yeah. doctrine the God yeah. and not yeah. making another person's belief the enemy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah.
Well, hold on. They're your brother and sister. Yeah, that's right. So Jesus talked very clearly about calling somebody else a fool. That's who, right. Who you know here on earth. Yeah. You know, you're in danger of throwing your life in the fire. Um, is essentially what he yeah. says. And, and so we have to be very, very humble and understand, okay, let's assume this. The person who in history, bar Jesus, who knew the most about God and Scripture, whoever that person is, you might say it's Moses or maybe it's someone we've never heard of before, how much did they really know about God? Half a percent? One <laughs> percent? The rest is all guesswork, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's assume we know a lot less than that person. Yeah. And let's start from that place of going, no matter how much I learn, yeah. I'm still going to be in deficit over 99%. That's right. And so that brings a level of humility. Now, for some people, they stop learning and they go, well, it's too much then. What's the point? Mm -hmm. And this is a phrase I often use, that mystery, God is mystery, right? Understanding, knowing everything, it's all a mystery that we're trying to un unveil. And mystery isn't something that we can never know. Mystery is something that we endlessly know. Mm -hmm. And, and so that draws people into an endless journey of knowing rather than giving up and saying, well, if I can never know it, then what's the point? Yeah. No, that's good, man. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's it? good. I think we're going to have to do number two on this one. We, we should. Yeah, yeah, we definitely should yeah. do a number two. I, I did have two. a question, though, uh, that I really wanted to touch on um, and, and going to fire this one at you. And I'll fire the question chat so it gives you a little bit of time to think. But I wrote down, they didn't respond back to God in Exodus. There's this whole marriage proposal. If you haven't seen um, the talk, then, then you know, go back and watch it. It's 25 minutes from Shane Willard. It's on YouTube. It's on cclife.tv. Yeah. Uh, you can yeah. find it all sorts yeah. of places. And, and he really talks about Pente Pentecost being this moment of marriage. And there were two proposals, one at Mount Sinai and then one re again um, in Matthew, um, in the upper room when the disciples, or, or in Acts, sorry, when the disciples are um, waiting for Jesus' return and Jesus leaves them with the Holy Spirit. And this idea of, he called it uh, the four stages of Laka, Sagula, Ketuba, mm -hmm. Hopa. Yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll have to go back and watch the video. There's a little uh, teaser there for yeah. you. Yeah. And so God takes the people of Israel through this courtship, which is really what it is. It's a courtship. And he lays down a marriage proposal, which is the Ten Commandments. And, and he's al it's almost like he's there on his knee with the, with the smoke and the fire. And here is the moment. But the people are so scared of the presence of God, they don't respond. They say, Moses, you talk to God. We, it's, we don't want to talk with him, yeah. essentially. Is that sparking discussion points in your head right now? Because I wonder how often we live out that life of God yeah. stretching out his hand, but we slap it away. Mm. And, and of course, in Acts, it changes because they do respond. Mm -hmm. and, and we see the power of that response, you know, uh, what becomes the birth of the church, what becomes the bride of Christ. But I see so many people... Uh, and I think it's an ongoing thing for each individual that God stretches out his hand in proposal to each and every one of us. Mm. But so often we don't respond. And so I guess the question is, why do you think some people just don't respond? I said I wanted to do a number two. Yeah. Maybe we can That's leave that as a, a cliffhanger. Good, that is such a good question to lead into. Um, because probably over our time mm. by far, but um, I think one of the, because it said in scripture, it says, I'm going to make you a kingdom of priests. Yeah. Not just one. Yeah. Plural. That's good. Yeah. I think it's Kohanin is the, is the Hebrew word for that. Uh, I didn't it's, know that. It's plural. Kohanin. Yeah. Ko. Uh, I think it's Kohan is the singular, but, but Kohanin is the priests, plural, mm -hmm. kingdom of priests. And I don't know if it was the introduction to it, God knowing they're not going to receive this because they just come out of 400 years of slavery. I'm their God. They didn't know who that was till now. Right. There's, there's smoke, there's fire, there's thunder, there's lightning, there's all this stuff happening. 
yeah, they're not going to receive this. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, even going back to, to what Pastor Shane said, Pastor Shane said there was a, a group of Burmese people in the mountains, uh, you know, hundreds and year, hundreds of years ago, right? Whatever it was, thousands of years ago, whatever it is now, um, that, that got this call out from that mountain from, you know, according to time around that time, like there was languages of fire that came, came to them. Mm. And, and, uh, and I think, was it, was it the God, what they call it? The God Yava. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, which, which we all know, like in, in old Testament language, it's like Yahweh, like Yud Ha Vav Ha. Yeah. Like there's, you know, the language of God. So, so this, this goes out to people all, all over the world. Uh, this this went out to everyone. It mm. wasn't just specifically them, um, but it was but it was the world. And and I don't know. And I think in 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 response to that, I don't know if it was fear that they weren't willing to step into that. And mm. I don't know. I think Jesus, man, prepped it up so good. Sure. Because in His language, He says, "Listen, I got to go away. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's going to come, and this yeah. is when He's going to do it." This yeah. is, I want you to wait here. I want you to wait. He gave them specific instructions mm-hmm. about it. And knowing that for, I don't know, Jay, from, from that time to, to, to the time of Jesus was how many, how many years? Like thousands, like how many uh, years would that yeah, have been? Yeah, it's about two, two and a half thousand years. Two, two and a half years. thousand yeah. years of prepping yeah. Pentecost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Celebrate, like putting in, in as a part of their celebrations, like prepping them all. It took two and a Took over two thousand years to prep them to receive yes. yep. what God was doing. Yeah, and 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 it was the celebration every year that they that they celebrated like through for thousands of years for their people, and and that this is this was something that was coming, and not you know they probably didn't know it at the time like this was pointing to Jesus something greater. Mm. They didn't know that, but 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 when it happened on that day, they understood. Because thousands of years have been ingrained into their families, into their history, and they talked about this celebration of what was getting ready to take place. And as a matter of fact, Rabbi Jesus set this whole thing up for us, and he told us this is what's going to happen and when it's going to happen, and boom, it yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was yeah. one of the greatest days ever. Yeah. And, and like in today's context, I think fear is a massive part of why people. Yeah. Don't push, come into church. Push back or push, push, back. push away, maybe. Or, yeah, don't yeah. accept Keep Christ. Keep it arm's length. Yeah. Arm's length. And they, can, and they don't often describe it as fear, but when you get to the root of it, it yeah. often, that's really the cause of yeah. what it is. Um, they're afraid that they may have to change some of their lifestyle. Yeah. They're afraid that they may have to deal with some of their demons or get called out on certain yeah. stuff. Um, they're afraid of meeting a new community and, and having to kind of rebuild their lives. I think there's a yeah. ton of fear caught up that, and it's unspoken fear mm-hmm. uh, about what it means to be transformed because let's be honest, most of us don't want to change. No. I don't. The older I get, the less I want to change. Yeah. <laughs> the less I want to be told about how my life has been wrong in the past. Sure. Because because then I would have to admit, wouldn't I, Yeah. that the way I've been doing life for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 yeah. years, you know, I come to Christ and I have to transform. Now I have to acknowledge that the way I've been doing it for but, 50 years may not have been the best. But isn't that becoming more like Christ? Like, like you know, it's like you said earlier, like the Apostle Paul said at the end of it, he's like, hey, I don't know, really know anything, guys. This is, uh, I'm really, I mean, here's one of the most studious, one of the most educated, one of the most brilliant people of that's written the New Testament. Yeah. Um, he you know, wrote most of it. And it, you know, you, you look at that and you're like, man, he was a brilliant guy. And at the end of it, he said, you know what? I, I really don't know a whole lot of things, but this is, this is one thing I do know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He does that quite a lot. He does. And, <laughs> but how much humility did that take? Yeah. Because just like you said, he's getting older and the older he gets, he's saying, you know what? The less I know. Yes. And the less I'm, yeah, I, I have a, a real, real grasp on. Yeah, that's what yeah. that's what the growth of wisdom is. Yeah. When you're 21 and you finish university, you think you know everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You step into the workplace. I'm going to show these old people how it's done. I don't know. Like anything. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the older you get, the more you realize, oh, yeah. actually, it's, yeah. there's just so much still to learn. Yeah. It's only it's the expert that realizes how little they know. Yeah. But it's the layman who thinks that they know everything. 
And that's true of everything uh, in sports or in philosophy or in science or what, you, you know, you, you approach an artist who's been doing it for 60 years and you ask them how much they know about art and painting and styles and textures. They know a heck of a lot more than somebody who's been doing it for one year, but they would tell you they've only just started scratching the surface. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the beauty of the further you yeah. go, the bigger the pool is. Yeah, and how great God is. Yeah, yeah exactly. This whole thing. Well, I hope today that this somehow enriched your life. And don't forget, if you if you listen to us through Spotify and Apple, please please hit that five star review uh, so that we can get into some algorithms that can. Uh, Pump us up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Wallet that like button. Do it. Smash it. Smash, Smash it. Smash that like button. God bless you guys. I hope this enriched your life.